In today's video, I'll be trying out the best home repair hacks the internet has to offer, including how to fix a giant hole in your ceiling that someone may or may not have fallen through, finding the best way to clean your shower head, making a huge mess in my kitchen testing out a Ziploc life hack, plus more things you guys dared me to do in the comment section. In the last video I asked you guys, what is something you wish would just go away? And unfortunately, all of those things have read your comments and have now left forever. And maybe you should have thought about that before you just wished everything would go away. Eh, or maybe it's for the best. But since you guys came up with so many comments, I thought I'd ask another question. What is your least favorite sound? It could be anything from the sound of your math teacher's voice or the neighbor's loud dog that barks first thing every morning. Be creative with your answers and put whatever you can come up with in the comment section. I'll be picking 10 of my favorite to be featured in the next video. Now, let's get this thing going. All right, well look, there's no other way I can say this, but I fell through my roof. So, like a genius, I went into my attic to fix a ceiling fan. There is something wrong with the little metal electrical box that you screw it into. And anyways, I fell out of the ceiling. Right there. It hurt. It sucks. I'm okay, but my arm's not. My arm is really, really, really bruised, and it hurt really bad when I fell out of my ceiling. So, I wanna make sure I get it sealed up, and remember also to never go in my attic ever again for anything ever. Even if I do need to fix a ceiling fan, and I do need to fix a ceiling fan, but we're gonna do that, and I'm gonna show you how to repair a gigantic hole in your ceiling. Obviously, I've already started the repair process here. I've already got drywall nailed into the rafters, so as you can see, the void is pretty much filled. But right after I fell out of it, it looked a little bit different. It looked like this. And that was definitely one of the scariest things that's happened to me in a long time. Now, as I remember it, the floor just completely gave out and I hit the bottom. But my girlfriend was actually in the room when I fell through the ceiling and she says that I paused for a little bit. Like my feet came down and I just sort of like hung there for a second and then fell through. And it happened so fast, I didn't really remember it that way, but it actually does make sense that maybe I caught myself with my arm on the way down. And that's why I have this huge disgusting bruise on my arm. It's got some hints of purple and yellow in it. It's looking nasty. But I survived. Now we gotta fix this thing. So I immediately went to Lowe's and got some drywall just so I could nail it up really, really quick because I just couldn't go to sleep knowing that there was a giant hole in my ceiling. So with this job, I'm gonna be first sanding everything down so we get a nice smooth surface to start because to be honest, there are still some giant gaps up here that need to be filled up as you can see. Stupid ain't easy, but somebody's gotta do it. And I'm gonna also hopefully be the one to fix it too. Now ordinarily I would just fill up a crack like that with putty, but since this is on the ceiling, I feel like that's gonna all droop out, plus I don't wanna wait for it to dry to sand it down, so I'm actually gonna be doing something different. I'm gonna be covering up those cracks in this fiber tape and then spraying this stuff on it, which is a product I've never used before. Apparently this is spray on drywall. So you just spray this over the hole and then there will be wall there or in my case, ceiling. Then I'm gonna paint it, and then I'm gonna spray popcorn stuff all over there because that's what's on the rest of my ceiling, and it actually does do a pretty good job of hiding disgusting marks like what I've made all over my ceiling, so this should be good. That being said, let's get to fixing this. The first step is the easiest. You just have to sand everything down, and then go right into taping over all the cracks because as soon as that's done, we can try out the spray on spackle. and I'm just spraying over where I put the tape. And if the spray doesn't come out very smooth, you can just flatten it while it's still wet. Next up is probably the most satisfying part of this process, painting it. Because that's when the random pieces of drywall that I just nailed to the rafters actually starts to look like a ceiling. Now we're gonna be doing what I think is going to be the fun part. Now I'm gonna be spraying the popcorn stuff onto my ceiling and we're gonna see if it actually covers it up and makes it look normal, or am I doing what I usually do and just making things worse? Let's find out. Okay, so here's the good news. It looks like we did do a pretty decent job at fixing that. However, we also got that stuff all over the place. I mean, as you can see, I got it all over my cabinets. I got it all over the wall. And worst of all, I got it all over my floor and my fridge. Awesome. It's actually not as bad as it looks. You can just wipe off all the excess with a wet towel. Which reminds me that I should make a note to never ever clean my ceiling, ever. 
Moving along. For this next life hack, we're back in my shower again. Only this time we're gonna be finding out if a classic life hack works, and that is soaking your shower head in vinegar to make it work again. Now, as many of you may know, a shower head only stays working perfectly for so long, and then crusty water buildup starts to coagulate inside of the device and it just doesn't work anymore. It sprays water in every direction and you're not getting good water flow. Not only that, but it's pretty disgusting and embarrassing when people come over and see it. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people are probably gonna see my shower head because I'm gonna show it on the video right now. So I'm just gonna turn on my shower head and we'll see how disgusting it looks. So as you can see, some of those little holes allow more water through than others. This one right here has just got like a tiny drip coming out while others seem to be working perfectly. And not only that, but well, it just looks disgusting. I mean, doesn't it? That's kind of gross. I'm sorry I showed that to you guys, but we are gonna clean it off. Now, according to the internet, all you have to do if you wanna clean one of these things off is hang a bag full of vinegar around the shower head and just let it soak in that. I think I've got a better idea. Rather than hanging a bag from my shower head and likely having it fall off and spill all over the place, I'm just gonna remove the shower head. Right? Like that, that was pretty easy. And it's not just because this shower head's easy to remove. That's what it's like with all shower heads, at least all the ones I've ever used. Now, as you can see, I have a bowl right here and a big jug of vinegar. I'm just gonna simply fill the bowl completely up with vinegar. Now, even though this life hack might work, if you hang a bag from your shower head, you might be a little slow. Just saying, just throwing that out there. Maybe not, maybe you are, I don't know. But this way I think will work a lot better if the vinegar does do its job, which I kind of expect it will. But we're gonna give it a couple hours and then we'll find out, which for you guys will be just an instant. Matter of fact, we'll just take a look right now. Okay, so it's been a while. I'm just now taking this thing out and it, it actually looks pretty good, surprisingly. Hmm, I mean, not too surprisingly. It was kind of supposed to do that, but you never can tell with these life hacks. But the question is not, does it look good? The question is, does it work? I mean, there's a good chance that it did just wipe off the crud on the outside, but that it's still completely clogged up on the inside. But let's find out first. All right, now I'll just turn on the shower head and we'll see what happens. <laughs> that works amazing! Look at that! It's completely fixed! And now I can finally take a shower again! It's been years! Okay, well maybe it hasn't completely stopped me from taking a shower, but it was a pain in the butt. Now I'll be able to do that without having to worry about water going everywhere, and uh, I wasn't really that worried about it anyways. And that being said, let's get on to the next one. For this next life hack, I wanted to test something out that I'd seen floating around online that I think is absolutely BS. But if it works, it'd be pretty cool. I just don't hold out much hope for it. They say that if you attach two Ziploc bags together, then it can kind of form one to keep your food fresh. And they showed them putting a big giant fish in it and freezing it, but that's simply not how that works. Ziploc bags work well because they completely seal up. But when you try to seal one to another one, it's not gonna seal up properly. I think this life hack will only take a few moments to myth bust, so we'll get right to it. So here is a normal bag. I'm just gonna fill it up with a little bit of water. Not even all the way, because to be honest, it doesn't need to be all the way. And since I'm pretty sure it's gonna spill, less is better. Then you take another bag inside out and you put this one over here and you connect the bags together using the corresponding Ziploc thingy. I believe that's the technical name for it. And that may work to some degree because they will snap together if you can line it up perfectly. But right there where it folds, there's not gonna be any seal there and all the water's gonna leak out or fish or whatever you put in the bag. Now, honestly, getting this put together is going to be pretty difficult for me because I don't have that great of dexterity. And this is just a flimsy plastic bag but they do say that anybody should be able to do this and that it's super easy. I mean, leave it to life hack channels, but I wanna show you guys how difficult it actually is just to get two Ziploc bags put together. I, I mean, I'm sitting here trying it. It's, it's actually not easy. They always make everything look so easy in the life hack channels, don't they? Oh, there we go. I got it to start zipping. I hate to be such a pessimist, but there's just no way that this is going to work. Still working on it though, not giving up. Just not hopeful, but we're trying. We're still trying here. Yes, we've actually got it to start actually popping like it's locking up together. There we go, I heard the I heard the snap. But my fear is over here on the ends where it's not connecting, that's where all the water's gonna fly out. Well, that's where it'll start to fly out and then the rest of the bag will likely just pop open. But again, that's just my prediction. We haven't turned this over yet, so we don't absolutely know for sure, but I imagine some of us have a pretty good idea. Look at that, just to prove that I do have it connected. 
right? I was actually able to get the zipper to lock together. But now we're gonna turn the bag over, and if this life hack works, all the water that's in this bottom bag will go into the top bag and none will spill out. All right, let's try it. And exactly like what I thought would happen. <laughs> Wow, and now I have water everywhere. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why they sell Ziploc bags in multiple sizes. Because you can't just connect them together to make more. I mean, maybe you could, but it would involve plastic welding and it'd be a whole lot of trouble and definitely not worth it. I guess it just goes to show that when you see something in the Life Hack channel, you pretty much expect it to be fake. And that being said, we'll be on to the next one. So if this video was helpful or if you just enjoyed watching it, make sure to click the like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and bell me for notifications if you'd actually like to see the videos. And as always, I'll be seeing you guys in just a few days with a new video. All right, thanks guys, bye.